can a bad timing chain explode your engine? And I don't mean just like, you know, the valves hitting the pistons and stuff like that. I mean explode your engine. I think some of you guys might be surprised by this. I know it'll get some wheels turning. We'll, we'll get into that in just a minute. First, I want to bring you guys up to speed on the stuff that's been going on around the shop here the last couple of days. Because we've been busy and covering a lot of ground. So, uh, first things first is, finally got back on the charger. Yesterday, I yanked the transmission out of it. So we got to get this thing up on the bench, give it a little bit of cleaning than that, get it up on the bench and uh, go through it, dissect it. So I know a lot of you guys are going to find this interesting because the, the stuff that's wrong with this transmission is typical of just an older used up trans. Um, you know, it's not blown up or anything like that, but it slips. It takes a long time for it to get into gear. Once it's in high gear, it'll just kind of like run away. So. And what's wrong with this transmission is very, very typical. And uh, like I said, we'll go through the whole thing and show you what we find and, and how to go about fixing yours. We've got a similar issue. But in the meantime, i got a huge mess to clean up here. So it's just, yeah. Right? All right. So also, we've got all of our parts for our, your first engine job series, this four liter Jeep engine that we're doing. And uh, we've got all the parts. And we'll get back on this, I don't know, I guess... Uh, Early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll uh, we'll pick up on that series again. But we finally have all the parts on hand to do this. Moving over here, um, I've got. So the, this is a project that's been sitting for a long time. We picked up this Buell last year. Um, we had a lot of fun with this bike. This was a great little bike, and then I I, I launched the transmission. We, we were doing New Year's Eve burnouts with it and uh, killed the tranny. So I picked up a parts bike and uh, we, we stripped that down. So I've got, I've got just a, a big pile of stuff to go through. I've got two engines and whatnot. But out of all of this, we're going to put one cool bike together and go have some fun with that thing. You know, spring fever, really, right now, all I can think about is motorcycles. <laughs> but eh, you know how that is. Um, Body Man Ron. So he's been cleaning up this corner of the shop here. He was here last night, and uh, he's he's getting ready to tear this magnum apart. So we're going to do something fun with this, right? We're going to do we're going to do a uh, a live engine tear down. So we'll watch we'll watch Ron take this thing apart. We'll taunt him as he takes this thing apart, and we'll do that. I think this weekend, uh, Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure, but we talked about it last night. So he'll uh, he'll have this thing ready to go for that. And then this trailer, oh my God, I got a lot of a lot of time in on this thing. So you know, we picked this up last week. We uh, we did a video a couple days ago, and um, I wanted to make it last. You know, one of the problems when you have anything that's new, and this is why I avoid new things because when something is brand new, it's like. You know, it'll never be that nice again. So it's like, you know, it, it kills you the first time it gets damaged or whatever it is. And I wanted this trailer to try to stay nice. So what I did was I, uh, I, I, spent, I spent a lot of time cleaning it, prepping the surface and everything, and then a couple of coats of a, of a, of a stain sealer. So this thing should... With any luck, it'll outlast me. You know, I know a lot of you guys like, oh, just pour a bunch of used engine oil on it, it'll be fine, it won't rot. Yeah, you know, you know what? I wanted to keep it nice. You know, I'm not a wood guy. I, I hate working with wood, to be honest with you, right? But I say, you know, I wanted this thing to try to stay as nice as possible. So I put the time in, and hopefully with any luck, it'll stay nice. All right, so back to the topic. Back to the topic. Can... A timing chain explode your engine. All right. So this comes about because the other night I watched the video. Um, the channel's called Gary's Garage. And this guy's got a really nice second generation Barracuda. And he's got what he claims to be a 600 horsepower 318 in it. So it's based on a 318 block. It's got a four inch crank in it it's got uh, trick flow heads really nice combination it's a four-speed car really nice combination looks good sounds good does everything right but he exploded 
the engine. Now when I say exploded the engine, I mean like literally the front of the block is missing. Like the whole area between between the timing chain and the crankshaft is just gone. Right? You look at the front of the motor and it's just a gaping hole. You look in there and all you see is the two connecting rods, the number one and number two cylinders, and they're still bolted to the to the crank journal, but everything around it is missing, right? So I thought that this was an extremely interesting situation because it's very rare you see any type of catastrophic failure like this. You'll see blocks split in half, you'll see holes in blocks and so on and so forth, but you'll never see the front of a block just torn away. And usually when there's catastrophic crankshaft failure, you're going to find it further back in a higher stressed area at the crank. Because remember now, at the very front of the crank, you're only carrying a load of the valve train and, and passing the rest of that power back. So when there's a breakage on a crankshaft, it usually happens to the middle or rear of the block. That's the most stressed area, very rarely at the front. And this wasn't just like a, a small event. This was an explosion. So what could cause something like this? Now, I went back mentally to the nitro days right away. Because when you think of catastrophic failure, you think of nitro. So there was an interesting phenomenon that would happen. Whenever you had an upset at the front of the engine related to the blower, it would always show up at the number two main, the upper shell of the number two main bearing. So let's say you, you, you popped the blower or you broke a belt or, or the, the idler broke or whatever would happen, that suddenly the blower was no longer being driven by the crank. What would happen was the crankshaft would deflect because those blowers take a huge amount of power to turn. So when that tension is suddenly released from the front of the snout of the crankshaft, which is being pulled up, it'll deflect and spring downwards. And it uses the number one main as kind of like a teeter-totter. So when it, des when it deflects downward at the front, it deflects upwards behind the number one, and you'll see a mark at the top of the number two shell. It's almost always guaranteed. Problem with the blower, drop the pan, and change out the number two shell because there's going to be a problem there. You had the same problem at the back of the crankshaft as well at the number four. So if you had a problem, let's say you broke a rear end or an input shaft or, or something happened with the clutch, you would always show up, the problem would always show up with damage at the number four main because again, see, it would deflect and it would use number five as a teeter totter and it would deflect and move around at the number four. So, Let's go back to this, this damage on Gary's 318. So this is what I see. The front of the block is missing. Now he also shows a shell, a main bearing shell. Now I don't know if it was from the number one or number two, but it's, it's all copper, okay? And which shows that it had either severe oil starvation at some point, right? Or it was loaded like crazy at some point. The fact that the connecting rods are still bolted to the journal. Now the connecting rods are bent, yeah, maybe because it went through trauma, but they're still bolted to the journal. Shows me that the problem didn't originate from an oil starvation issue where it'll turn a rod bearing and, and break a rod. That's, that's typically that's what happens. But no, both of the rods were intact and fine. And you had this main journal that showed excessive wear, showed excessive uh, problem. It wasn't turned, it was just worn, excessively worn. So what could cause a crankshaft to break right there at the very front. Well, too tight of a timing chain will pull, will be pulling up excessively on the front of the crank. Now remember, a crank by its nature has to be springy. You know, they don't, they don't flop around, but the crank has to be able to move. It has to have some spring to it. That's part of its function. That's why race engines use such large oil clearances because the higher the output of the engine the the more deflection there is on the crankshaft going through its normal cycles and so that extra oil clearance allows it to move around not make contact with things now if you start off with it in a situation where you've got a timing set a timing chain timing chain and gear set that's too tight and i've seen this many times 
it'll be pulling up on that on the front of the crank. Now, when we think of timing chain problems, we always think of them as being too loose because that's the typical thing. You know, the timing chain wears in, it's too loose. But there are certain situations, and I've come across this many times, different engines, different, different combinations, where the timing chain, when it's put on the engine, is too tight. It's way too taut. It'll go on, but just barely. And when that happens, it's loading the front of the crankshaft in an upward position. So what would cause something like that? All right, so let's go from, from possibilities. Let's, let's just talk about possibilities. The first is that, unknown to a lot of people, there are oversized timing sets for popular engines. An oversized timing set is used when an engine is line bored or line honed. Because when you're doing that, when you're line boring, line honing an engine, you're moving the crankshaft closer to the cam. And so for popular engines, they'll make an oversized timing set. So what it'll be is the gears will have just a very, very slightly larger diameter to make up for that operation, moving the crank closer to the cam. When you put an oversized, if you ever come across an oversized timing set and you go to put it on, a, on an engine that hasn't been line bored, line honed, you'll find that it'll go on there but it'll be extremely, extremely tight. This will be like a guitar string instead of just, you know, instead of a chain. That's one possibility. Another possibility, I've come across this also, is where there's a mix match of components, where the timing gear, the pitch on the timing, on the timing gears, the teeth, don't match each other. And so the chain will ride all the way down into the grooves of one gear, but kind of ride above the grooves on the other. And that creates a situation where the chain is excessively taut. Other possibilities are slight run out, either at the snout of the crank or the snout of the cam, where it's not completely true and it runs out by just a little bit. But there are a number of things that will cause a chain to be too tight. Now that's with the engine sitting cold. You just, it's, it, hasn't even, it hasn't been started or anything. You just put this thing together and it's already way too tight. Now, the engine heats up. And while there isn't a great deal of expansion to the block between the crank and the cam, even one thousandth of an inch growth from the time it's cold to the time it's hot will take that chain that's already way tight and make it even tighter. And that's pulling up on the snout of the crankshaft. Now, within a short time, the chain will either generally stretch a little bit or the teeth will wear a little bit and some of that will be relieved. But on that initial start, when you first start this thing and that chain is just tight, 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 when you first start it, it's really pulling up on the front of the crank. That causes a stress area, a stress problem right here now this crank isn't broken i cut this but this area right here the cheek of the crank is the weak area now if you've got too tight of a chain pulling up on this as it's starting to run it's going to cause a lot of stress right here and potentially start a slight crack now you don't need a major crack to have a major problem in fact, it won't even show up. Like, for instance, on the drag engine, you may not see it. It may not materialize as an issue for a dozen runs, 15 runs, 20 runs. On a street engine, it could be 10, 20, 30, 40,000 miles before that crack is, is flexed enough and opens enough to the point that you have catastrophic failure. Now, I suspect that's what happened in the case of this Barracuda. Now, I could be wrong. Obviously, there's many different things that could have happened. But based on previous experience, things that I've seen, dynamics that I've seen, I would almost guarantee that the problem there was, at the, it was in the timing set, or the relationship between the snout and the gear. Now, it could have possibly been a little bit of run out on the cam or the, or the cam gear where it wasn't spinning completely true and there was that tight spot or the same thing on the on the crankshaft might not have been completely true or the, the crank gear might not have been completely true and all it takes is a thousandth or so of an inch of that extra run out and a tight chain to stress the crank 
in that upward direction, not allow it to spring to be that flexible thing that it's designed to be. So remember, a crankshaft is a spring, and that will cause stress cracks that before long will will really, that will give you exactly what this guy had, where it literally blew the front of the block off, but there was no damage to the rods or anything. Well, the, the rods were bent because of the explosion, but they were still attached and, and looked like, you know, like nothing ever happened. So keep that in mind. Like I said, when we think about timing chains and stuff, we always think of them, oh, it's too loose, it's sloppy, and so on and so forth. But honestly, you'd rather have it too loose than too tight. Too loose, yeah, you know, you get some scattered spark timing and, and inconsistent, you know, valve timing. I, I, I get all of that, right? But too loose won't rip, rip the crankshaft in half and, and, and just yeet the whole front of the block. So keep that in mind. Timing chain has to fit right. Not too loose, not too tight, and you're good to go. All right, guys. I hope you got something out of that, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.